how to discover and embrace your genius. And what I mean by your genius is that which you do better than anyone else. I was chatting with one of my clients recently. He's the president of his construction company. And we were having a one-on-one -on -one coaching session. And one of his big challenges is the way that he spends his time. As we were chatting about that, we started to discuss an interaction he had with a potential client just the previous day. And he was in front of this client with one of his PMs. Now, in his business, the PM is responsible for landing the work as well as running the projects. And frankly, the PM was a bit intimidated by this potential client who was old school, crusty, little confrontational, and not necessarily easy to build a relationship with. But you see, my client, his genius is building relationships with people. And though he's not crusty or old school in any way, he is not intimidated by types like that. And in fact, he's able to bridge the gap and build relationships with them and land work. And so in this video, I'd like to talk about how you should be identifying and embracing your genius. And you think about your construction company, right? Everyone's got to bid work, land work, build work, get paid. And as you think about the areas of your genius, you should be able to identify that. And as your company grows and develops, you should be spending as much time as possible in your area of genius. Okay, so first thing we're going to talk about is how to identify your genius if you don't already know it. And then we're going to talk about the danger of knowing your genius. Then we're going to talk about changing your mindset. And then finally, at the end, we'll talk about making a commitment to embracing that genius. Let's talk about identifying your genius. Your genius is something that you do better than other people. And one of the fastest ways to identify your genius is that you yourself notice it. You don't know why you do something well, you just do it well. So for instance, let's say you're looking at a set of plans and because of the way that your mind works, you immediately see issues and opportunities in that set of plans that another person who might have a lot of experience in construction and some technical skill doesn't necessarily see because of the way that your mind works. So think about that for a moment. What do you see that others don't see? What insights do you have that others don't? What tasks do you perform that provide value to your business that sometimes don't feel like work? Where is your intuition sharpened to such an extent that without even knowing why you're doing things very well and performing at a high level? Another way for you to notice or identify your genius is other people notice you doing it well and comment on it regularly. For instance, they say things like, I'm glad you're doing that and not me. Going back to my client, I can tell you the PM who was struggling to build a relationship with crusty dude who had a project they were bidding on, he was super happy that my client was in the room because my client has the genius of building relationships with people. And one of the ways that you can really think about this idea of genius is just by using this phrase. Unlike others in my field, I, and then fill in the blank. So unlike others, what is it that you do that others don't? You've got to be able to identify that genius. And remember, your genius is something that adds value to both the top and the bottom line of your business. Whether it be in terms of the way you work with people, your understanding of processes, your understanding of how to build a project profitably, whatever the case is, you've got to be able to identify that genius. But the second thing we want to talk about is the danger of knowing your genius, the danger of identifying that genius. And this is really, really interesting because let's say you've come up through the trades and you're used to having your belt on, you're used to doing hard work, 
physical, manual labor, where you can see that today I accomplished X. I did this amount of work. I laid this amount of tile, or I was able to frame this square footage. Whatever the case is, you can see what you're doing, and there's a finished product at the end of the day that tells you and others that you did some work. And that's one of the dangers of your genius because some of us, the genius that we have, isn't directly related to what others call work. And it doesn't feel like work to you. And as a result of that, you can sometimes feel guilty when you focus your time on your genius, even though that genius may add bottom line profit to your business because it doesn't feel like work. And that's the danger of your genius. Because it doesn't feel like work, you don't dedicate enough time to it. But you know in your heart that that genius, if you exercised it regularly, has a massive positive impact on your business. So what do you need to do? You need to change your mindset. Let me give you an illustration. It's a personal one. So I have five children. <laughs> and we have three bathrooms in our house. I don't clean toilets anymore. It's not what I do. And it's not because I'm not willing to clean toilets. I can clean toilets just like anyone else, but I do not do it anymore. There's other people in my house who clean toilets, and I don't feel bad about that because there's many things that I do that they can't do. Division of labor is a wonderful thing, and if you're going to take your construction company to where it needs to go, a lot of that is going to depend on you being able to focus on your genius while other people take on the other important aspects of your business. And division of labor is a wonderful thing. And it's okay for you to say, you don't do what I do. And that's not in any way saying that you don't work, but the particular type of work that you do is different than what others do. And here's a little mindset that I think you need to have, and it's particularly true if what your genius is doesn't feel like work, and it's true if others perceive it to not be working. And it's this. Here's your mindset that you need to adopt. What I'm doing now has a direct bottom line influence on the success of our company. So for instance, if your genius is business development and you're meeting with the right people who have the right projects in the right locations and you're having a conversation with them and you're not sweating and you're able to build those relationships and at the end of a conversation or two or three or however long it takes, you land a project, you may not have sweated one ounce of perspiration. <laughs> but you've had a massive positive impact on the success of your company and on the bottom line. So you need to embrace that mindset that when you are doing your genius, what you do has a direct bottom line influence on the success of your company. Don't be ashamed of it. Embrace it and commit to it. And so with that in mind, you've got to make a commitment. And here's the commitment. Number one, you've got to get together with your partners because sometimes what happens at a partnership level is there can be some tension, right? My genius is not your genius and what I do doesn't look like work to you and so you think that when I'm doing that, I'm not working. That's not the case. So get an agreement among the partners as to who's going to do what. I've seen in many construction companies, you get one guy, he's the numbers guy and he just thrives on the spreadsheets and he understands and sees numbers in a way that other folks don't. Whereas another guy sees the plans in a way that another person doesn't. Or another person has the ability to develop those relationships. And they have just different abilities and they see that and they divide the labor and they divide the responsibility and it works really well. Get an agreement on what it is that each one of you does unlike others in the business. And then with that agreement, make a commitment to spending time doing your genius. 
and then communicating that out. And one very practical way for you to do this is simply to block out, let's say, one day where all you're doing is your genius. So let's say your genius is business development. And Friday, that's your business development day. And I don't care if you're going out golfing or if you're having a lunch or a breakfast or you're dropping by someone's office and having a conversation, right? It may not seem like work to others, but what you're doing is having a bottom line impact on your business. And if you didn't do that, then your business would suffer. So block out that time and commit to spending time executing your genius. And then, of course, discipline yourself, because I can guarantee you this one thing. If you understand what your genius is, and you get agreement that you should be working on that genius from others in your company, and you block out the time to do it, immediately there's going to be incursions into that time block. People are going to be saying, hey, can I get some time for this project issue over here? When you know you should be face to face with a potential client having a conversation about a project opportunity. And what do you have to say in that situation? You must say, no, I am not going to spend time doing that. I can do it on Monday. I can do it on Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday. But Friday is the day that I spend time in front of clients and potential clients building relationships. And so back to the crusty dude and the scared PM and my client who is a genius at business development and building relationships. At the end of the meeting, they land a $1.5 million job. Now, I don't know how big your company is, but $1.5 million may not be a lot for you, but every little bit counts, right? Because on that $1.5 million, uh, $1 million job, they're going to make about $180,000 to the bottom line, nice 12% profit at the end of the day. Now, extrapolate that into the relationships that you have. Maybe you're bidding on a $15 million job or working on a $150 million job. And that one or two conversations with key decision makers that you are able to get into and bring your genius to the table in order to build those relationships and secure that work. Think about that massive impact it has on your business. And all because you've identified your genius, you've changed your mindset and given yourself permission to embrace doing that genius, and you've got everyone on the same page so that you can make a commitment in your calendar on a consistent basis to execute on that genius okay so let me just wrap it up here identify your genius set aside time to do it and don't worry if it doesn't feel like work hope you enjoyed this video and just let me say this if you are the president of a construction company and you find yourself out of control a little bit in terms of the way you're spending your time or you're saying to yourself I need to be more disciplined in executing on my genius then perhaps you could benefit from an executive coaching relationship with someone like myself who's an expert in construction and has spent two decades working with contractors helping them to build profitable companies Reach out to me on my website, constructiongenius.com slash contact. Put your details in there, and I'll get in touch with you, and we can have a chat about if or how I can help you with the executive coaching services that I provide to contractors. Hope you found this video helpful.